Good morning. It's great to see you and to welcome you all to morning worship. Sorry, are you hearing me? That's good. Or, or it's maybe not good. <laughs> so, uh, well, anyway, we'll get started again. It's great to see you and to welcome all of you to morning worship, especially if you're a visitor or returning after a break. We hope all of you enjoy worshiping with us and come back again soon. It's always good to see the youngsters with us for the early part of the service. Any young visitor is invited to go across to the hall with the other youngsters to join in the fun of Sunday school or to check out our teen scene. And if you're under three, mum or dad can take you across to the hall to play in the creche at any time during the service and leave you in safe hands. There's a special welcome this morning to someone who started coming along regularly here just a few months ago. Someone we enjoy talking to and hearing from. Someone we gladly welcomed uh, into the Lawson family. Of course, it's our friend Tim, who is who is steadily making his way towards becoming an ordained local minister, and I'm happy to see is taking the service this morning. Welcome, Tim. We're here to have some family time, worshipping together. Let's turn to those nearest us, give one another, especially anyone we haven't met before, the warmest of welcomes, signing, if you wish, what we all know to be true, God loves you. <laughs> you'll have seen from the intimations, you'll have seen from the intimations that all the organizations are meeting at the usual times this week. But for the benefit of those looking in, I'll quickly run through them. Louse and Todd's Toddlers Group are here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings, 9.30 to 11.30. The Men's Guild meet on Tuesday evening, 7 to 9. The bus shopping trip in February is on Wednesday, 22nd. Contact Valerie at 462860 if you are interested. This Thursday, we have our short service of worship, 11s in church at 11. The lunch club in the hall starting at 11.45, with the craft group in the afternoon, 2 to 4, and the men's prayer group in the evening, 7.30 to Amen. Friday evening is for the youngsters, with our two youth groups in the hall, 6.30 to 7.45 and 7.45 to 9 and our popular drop zone in the church, 7.30 to 9. Our warm space continues every afternoon, Monday to Friday, 2 to 5 in the church. And please, join in our prayer breakfast, 9.30 on a Saturday morning. This is a special time together, enjoying whatever you wish to eat, followed by a period of prayer. A couple of reminders now. Elders, uh, for elders, there's a meeting of the Kirk Session and core group members in the hall at 7 o'clock this Wednesday. That's 1st February. And to all of us, the deadline for copy for the next issue of the News from the Pews is 12th February. That's a fortnight from now. Last Sunday, I drew attention to our need for volunteers. And I'm delighted to say we got the urgent help we asked for. You'll have seen today that we're still looking for help with the crash, walking group, magazine distributors, lunch club deliveries, many bus drivers and escorts, and warm space attendants. And if you can help in any of these areas, please contact the church office or any elder. Currently, we're very short of warm space attendance. So if you can spare an afternoon now and again to put on a welcoming smile, 
have a chat, make and drink lots of tea or coffee, and watch films, please have a word with Rona as soon as possible. For those wishing to come round the Lord's table, today we have an informal communion following the service using the cups you received in the vestibule. And finally, everyone, whether or not taking communion, you're invited across the hall after the service for a cuppy and chat before you go home. Folks, it really is good to come together to worship God. We sing as the introit to this morning's service, Rejoice! Rejoice! Christ is in you. Please stand to sing. Thank you, Ron, for that very warm welcome and for everybody for the round of applause. Of course, it should come afterwards when one finishes, not before one starts. Thank you, Graham. Um, But who can tell? We're almost at the end of this month. I don't wish to move things along quicker than they are. But with that, we're coming to our whistle-stop tour of the end of looking at Matthew in January and focusing on what Jesus said. We've covered the announcement of the kingdom and that call to the first disciples, what it means to be a kingdom person, loving, standing up. 
And last week, the sending out of the 12 disciples to grow the kingdom and Jesus telling them not to be afraid because the words will be given to them. And today, we're looking towards the end of Jesus' ministry before his entry into Jerusalem, looking at what Jesus said, we have been given to take on the task of growing God's kingdom. As we spend time together in God's presence, listening, hearing what our Lord Jesus Christ is asking of each one of us, and being open to allow the Spirit to work in our hearts and minds, let us today ask that God will approach us, that we will be touched, that God may speak to us today through our worship, and that we may respond. As we read in Psalm 29, the voice of the Lord is heard on the seas. The glorious God thunders, and his voice echoes over the ocean. The voice of the Lord is heard in all its might and majesty. As we continue our worship, we're recognizing that the Lord is with us. So let us stand and sing, Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Let us come together as we talk with God. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom the whole universe cannot contain, 
We rejoice that we can bring our prayers of adoration before you. In this, we recognize that your power is with us, that it is moving in this place, that your glory is shining here, that you are our radiant King of light, that you are a wonderful and glorious beyond our imagining. And yet your love surrounds even the smallest creature. We are amazed beyond telling when we consider your creative activity, the mighty mountains, the tiniest flower, the crashing waves. But above all, we marvel that you created us in your own image and redeemed us in Christ when we fell into wrongdoing. How could we fail to offer you our praise when we think on these things? However, Lord... We're sorry that our earthly worship sometimes is incomplete and imperfect. We're sorry that we're so engrossed with ourselves and our own concerns that we do not give time to considering why you made us who we are and put us where we are. We're sorry that we're distracted by what we do for ourselves rather than what we do for you. We're sorry that our minds wander when we come to you, sometimes thinking of Sunday lunch, is the weather turning, will I get out for a walk? That we're distracted and not open to hearing your call to us. We take a moment to say sorry for where we know ourselves we have come up short. We are sorry. Forgive us, Lord. In receiving your forgiveness and being your kingdom people, help us to recognize that we are part of your kingdom, that you, in creating us, have a purpose for us. Give us a wider vision so that in you we may find our true selves and the reason for our life, that we may detect your purpose for us. O God, you are majestic in all the earth. Though you are high and lifted up, you're also very near through the presence of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for him, the sure foundation of our faith, who lived and died and rose again to bring us eternal life. We thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit dwelling within us. May your spirit enable us to encounter you, to know your will, and in that may worship and magnify you to your glory. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer, in whose name we pray together. Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, Question this morning is, who got some toys at Christmas? Zach, I can see a hand. Great. Can you shout out what they might have been? Oh, Squishmallow. Okay. Okay, apologies. No wonder I didn't understand what you said because I don't know what it is. But there we go, Zach. A phone, oh my goodness gracious me, go on. A Pokemon toy, that's an honesty for you, that's great. Um, any adults got any gizmos, you know, or grown-ups got gizmos, something, no? Okay, the question now is, are you still playing with your squash Milo? <laughs> yes? Yeah, you, oh, good, you are. Yes, Zach, obviously it's a phone, you're going to be, still be playing with that, no doubt. And the Pokemon toy? 
sometimes play. Well, that was sort of what was the answer what I was sort of maybe expecting because quite often we get new toys and they're new and that's great, but then sometimes we get bored with them or we forget them. But maybe sometimes, I don't know, some people have received a video game. Did anybody get anything? Of course, I say video game, but did anybody get a console game or maybe a game for the tablet or a game for the telephone? Yeah? Well, those are sort of things we might have got. I remember playing The Hobbit uh, with my son, Benjamin, um, and we started off not really understanding what to do. Um, working on it, we tried working on it, improving ways of what we could do um, to progress. But as many of you know with video games, you can't really get to the end straight away. You have to make several attempts on doing that. And sometimes you have to restart. But we picked up and we learned and we got better, learning a different way of doing things so we would get to the end. However, if we left the game for a while, quite often you forget the moves. And of course I say we, but really, it wasn't that. It was Dad sitting there making Dad comments, while Ben was obviously doing all the clever character moves, all that sort of thing. But that's not quite the same thing as what we are able to do ourselves when we're using our own abilities rather than the abilities of a character in a game. That might be such things as singing or dancing or using a skateboard whether that's in a sort of talent competition or not, we realize that we have an ability and something we're good at, and we practice and we practice. And we recognize that we have to practice to be able to develop that ability, or we lose the ability to do it well. And that might be singing the top notes making a smooth dance flow, and you'll be pleased, I'm not going to give a demonstration of that, but it might, it might be in it, especially if you're with a friend, you have to make sure you get the moves correct. Or in a skateboard, you might do a double twist and flip. And if you think that sounds quite good, I've made that up, so it sounds good, so I don't know if it is a real move or not. <laughs> but doing these things is a bit like playing a video game, improving ways of how we progress. But there are different ways of doing things, but it's us doing it so that we can reach our target. Also, for me, standing here today, training for the ministry, as Ron said, for ordained local ministry, and doing that for our Lord Jesus, I might be standing here talking to you, but I still... I thought I was about to be switched off then. I thought, I thought I, you know, I still have to practice what I say and how I say it. And you might not see the Reverend Karen making notes, but I assure you she is because she has a long report to write about me about my development. But what I'm talking about is all sorts of different abilities. And each one of us has been given some abilities, but maybe some have not yet realized what their abilities are. Just the other week in the hall, George, was discussing his, uh, you thought I'm going to get you back now for what you said earlier. George was discussing his musical abilities uh, with me, myself, and David, or more so, he was discussing the abilities of his daughter. And he said to David, and unfortunately, David's not here today, but there we go. He said to David that he, and David, he's talking about this, and David said, I don't have any musical abilities. And George said, Well, maybe the abilities aren't there yet. You just don't understand them. So there will be time for us to really understand what our abilities are. But sometimes we have our abilities, and it's about doing something with them. And if you remember at the start of the year, Ron thanked a number of people for all they'd done. That was for using their abilities, and some people through the year had actually taken on more to do more to help. We all have different gifts and abilities from God, even if we're not yet old enough to recognize what they all are. But as we do recognize, we have to use them for his kingdom. And in doing so, we will develop them. We will become skilled, being able to do more with them. We're called to keep using our abilities for our walk with Jesus, to keep using them and developing them for our service to our neighbors and our community in the name of Jesus. So as we think about our abilities, let's keep thinking on how we can use them. Let's close our eyes in prayer. 
Almighty God, we thank you for the many abilities you give us. Help us to develop them and keep developing them so we may use them for your glory and the advancement of your kingdom. Amen. Whatever we do with our abilities, we do know that we can be bold and be strong, for the Lord our God is with us. So our next song is going to be that, and we do have some actions, so I don't know if anybody's going to come up and stand with me to do some actions. Please, yes, because I can't do actions very well. We've got one volunteer, thank you. Come on up. Come on up. Brilliant. Do you know this song at all? No, you can, you can shake your head. You can shake your head. Sky, thank you. Come on, come on. Some older ones, brilliant. More the help, the merrier. I know there's one person in this building who loves doing actions and they're not yet up on stage, but I'll forgive her. There we go. Brilliant. Come on up. So we've got be bold. So we're going to do this for being bold, yeah? And then be strong, like this with our arms. For the Lord your God is with you, and then doing with you like that, that says twice. And then on the next slide, if we can have that, Rona, I am not afraid, no, 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 I am not dismayed, and then we're going to walk. Yes, we're going to turn this way, and walk. because I'm walking in faith and victory, and then we turn around, because I'm walk, come on, walk in faith and victory, and then for the Lord your God is with you. Yes? Don't follow me, try and remember those, because I'll forget the actions. <laughs> So let's stand to sing, please. Come on. And everybody in the pews can do the actions as well. So. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord of God is with you. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord of God is with you. I am. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody else, for, for joining in, in with that. Great. Just a couple more. There we go. That's what. Perfect. This week in the Gospel written by Matthew, we have Jesus talking to the disciples, answering the questions on when he'll come again and how they will know. Our reading links to the parable just before that, the, that of the ten bridesmaids or the ten girls, depending on what translation you use, with Jesus saying, again saying, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. So this is another parable that can be seen as a prompt to Jesus' disciples about how to conduct themselves, how to be kingdom makers as they wait for Jesus, their master, to return. And Gillian is going to read for us. Thank you. Our reading is from Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30, the parable of the three servants. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Once there was a man who was about to leave home on a trip. He called his servants and put them in charge of his property. He gave to each one according to his ability. To one he gave 5,000 gold coins, to another he gave 2,000, and to another he gave 1,000. 
Then he left on his trip. The servant who had received 5,000 coins went at, sorry, went at once and invested his money and earned another 5,000. In the same way, the servant who had received 2,000 coins earned another 2,000. But the servant who had received 1,000 coins went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The servant who had received 5,000 coins came in and handed over the other 5,000. You gave me 5,000 coins, sir, he said. Look, here are another 5,000 that I have earned. Well done, you good and faithful servant, said his master. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant who had been given 2,000 coins came in and said, You gave me 2,000 coins, sir. Look, here are another 2,000 that I have earned. Well done, you good and faithful servant, said his master. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant who had received 1,000 coins came in and said, Sir, I know you're a hard man. You reap harvests where you do not plant, and you gather crops where you did not scatter seed. I was afraid, so I went off and hid them your money in the ground. Look, here is what belongs to you. You bad and lazy servants, his master said. You knew, did you, that I reap harvests where I did not plant, and gather crops where I did not scatter seed. Well then, you should have deposited my money in the bank, and I would have received it all back with interest when I returned. Now take the money away from him and give it to the one who has 10,000 coins. For to every person who has something, even more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But the person who has nothing, even the little that he has, will be taken away from him. As for this useless servant, throw him outside in the darkness. There he will cry and gnash his teeth. Amen. And we will now sing Inspired by Love and Anger.
Let us join together in prayer. Father, we gather together today in prayer. We know that you hear and answer them, maybe not in the way we would hope, but you do what you know is best for us. We pray for our world. There is so much unrest just now. We think of Ukraine. We hope and pray for an end to the violence that doesn't seem to be stopping. We hope that the leaders will bring an end to this mindless war soon. Lord, we ask you to comfort the families and victims of the terrible shooting in the synagogue in Israel. Help them through this difficult times they now face and in the future. We think of the people in New Zealand who have been affected by the floods. Many have been made homeless and many are facing being made homeless due to the landslide because of the floods. We are fortunate to be able to join together in prayer and worship you without fear and persecution. Surround those who are with your love and protection. Father, we are very lucky to have the NHS and we pray for all those who work in it to give them the strength they need to help them through these difficult times. We pray for all our emergency services. Keep them safe as they keep us in, safe in our hour of need. We ask you to keep our armed forces protected as they try to keep the peace around the world. Lord, we think of those who for some reason or another are unable to be here with us today. Surround them with your love for those who are ill. Place your healing hand upon them. For those struggling with mental health issues, surround them with your love. Comfort those who have lost loved ones, placing your loving arms around them. We take a few moments of silence to bring before you those that we hold in our hearts. Father, guide those who have lost their way. Help them back to you. Let the Holy Spirit move among us and touch each and every one of us, both here and at home. Lord, we ask this in our Lord and Saviour's name. Amen. We now stand to sing, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Father's pleasure, we should call him one. 
Karen last week started talking about the preparation and plans we would need to make if we took on a challenge. She mentioned her preparedness for running a couple of marathons. I just about managed the Great North Run, which is half marathon, so I can appreciate what she's been through. But that was focused inwardly on ourselves. Over the last two years, the presbyteries have been working on the new presbytery mission plans. And these are markedly different from the old plans in that they, which all just talked about charges and the buildings. And this is to renewed focus on mission, how the whole church needs to be looking out, how we are called to change with the limited resources we have. We've been warned we cannot stand still. The mission plan for the legacy presbytery of Angus was approved at the end of last year. This mission plan is made of building blocks, groupings within the old presbytery, such as the four for grouping, and then congregations within those groupings, and then, of course, the integral part of those congregations, which is us. And so that plan does affect us all. All. We know that the passage we heard this morning so well that sometimes we miss that kingdom call, the outward mission that we are given. What each servant with, what they're entrusted with, is no small amount. Five, even two, even 1,000 gold coins, the amounts are not trivial. What would you do with that many gold coins? Assuming you could lift them. In other translations, it's mentioned bags of gold. And it's understand each bag would be about 15 years of a daily wage of a laborer. So these are not inconsiderate sums. These servants were given real responsibility. But with that, real opportunity. And we see two of them relish that, taking what they've been given and multiplying it. 5,000 become 10, 4,000, sorry, 2,000 become 4. I'll get right my maths right somewhere along the lines there. And they're praised for their work. But one digs a hole to put the money in to hide it. A common thing to do to bury valuables for safekeeping. Think of those treasure troves still being found today from the Roman period. But when the master returns, he's criticized for not making the most of the 1,000 coins, even to the extent of not going to the bank. So, you know, but if you think about it, you can make an appreciation today for that with the interest rates we might be getting. He did the proverbial thing of hiding the money under the mattress. And there wouldn't have exactly been a large amount of banks to go to on the high street corner. Maybe we're facing the same thing today. And just think for us filling out those money laundering forms. Poof, why would you do it? We hear the usual call in this passage to be good stewards to use wisely and well what's been entrusted to us and what happens when we do not. The disciples, though, would have understood the underlying message of the criticized servant. They would see this servant as being the scribes and Pharisees, in that the scribes and Pharisees had been given something that resembles the thousand gold coins. They had been given the law of Moses, the presence of God amongst them through the temple and the promises given to Abraham that God would bless Israel and through Israel, the whole world. But the scribes and Pharisees were doing nothing with it. They took no action in furthering the kingdom and they were going to be called to account. It was about their attitude to the law and the truth of God. They did not want any change, only to keep everything and the law exactly as it was. They saw any change 
any development, any alteration, anything new as an abomination. This is why they would be called to account. Through this, Jesus is saying there can be no advancement without change in attitude. And in that, read our change in attitude. Thinking back two Sundays ago, when Karen spoke about living a different way, without stepping forward in, into what may be unknown to us. And back to last week, Jesus and his sending out of the 12 disciples, promising that they will be given the tools that they need, whether that be food or words. We need to be open to not holding back. We need to be committed to change, not to be stuck like the scribes and Pharisees, but to be journeying forward. This is part of what we're called to do with the Presbytery Mission Plan that's been produced. This is about us, the church, focusing on the kingdom, focusing on the outward mission, creating a new positiveness for the kingdom. There will be change, and we need to embrace it and play our part in that mission. And this then brings us to the other aspect of the story we heard this morning. The servants who develop what the master has entrusted to them are those that hear Jesus' call and develop what Israel has into something new. They're like the ones that show the growth of God's kingdom. They're like the servants who make wise use of the money and they will be rewarded. I remember it was in the summer, just after I'd been accepted as a candidate in training, that I had a call from our pastoral assistant who was due to be taking the guild dedication service, saying that she couldn't make it and asking if I would be willing to do it. Of course, I couldn't really say no. However, I had some preparation because I know the guild are a fierce bunch, and I'm sure you'll agree. But that is, they are fiercely passionate. They are fiercely active and a fiercely committed bunch. But I'd said yes, and I set to and I looked at the Guild Dedication Service, and I chose the equivalent reading in Luke. And I recommend you read the two passages together later, because you'll notice there are some subtle differences in the context. But I decided, I chose, and I chose this passage, because I see that's where the Guild works. And I spoke about how their guild, in their small effort, that what they do isn't just on its own. It's how that builds together. And builds so that the guild in 2021 could announce that they'd raised over half a million pounds in the previous three years for work to support different organizations for the furtherance of the kingdom. However... We can focus sometimes a bit too much on the money, the gold coins. Of course, yet other translations use the word talent, and a talent was a unit of measure. But obviously now it's the English word talent, meaning natural ability. As I say, it's not just about the money. In the story, the master has invested huge sums in his servants, but he, it's clear that he expects not only the money which will grow. In giving the servants with the responsibility with the money, he's expecting each one to develop the abilities that they have based on what he knows of them. He hands over the means for each of them to make something of themselves for him. We see this clearly when the 10,000 coins are returned. The focus is not on the coins. It's the praise to the servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. And we note the same response to the first two servants. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness both put in charge of many things and share the happiness. And we've seen the same with the wages in the vineyard. The reward is for not having completed more work than others. How many more times do we expect more praise than somebody else 
for a job well done. It may be natural, but we have to remember we all have different starting points. We're not all given the equivalent of 5,000 gold coins. The masters returned and received back the money from the, from the first two servants, and his happiness, his joy, his relief is evident. We can see they, they've met his expectations, and he's asked them to come and share with him. They're not being dismissed, going back to what they were doing before, but they're coming to share, to be put in charge of doing more things, to continue their relationship of trust with their master. And here we see the opposite of the servant who dug the hole in the ground and hid the money. Not having that relationship. He didn't understand what he was being asked to do. He saw that when the master returned, he would take everything back. And as the servant said, I know you're a hard man. You reap harvests where you did not plant and you gather crops where you did not scatter seed. This servant saw that the work was pointless because he wouldn't get any reward. But he didn't understand that the real investment that the master was making in him and his abilities. And that might be the risk for us. The possibility that we lose sight of the sure truth that everything we have, all our abilities, our gifts, our time, our money, come from God. We can start to think that what we have is not, is all that we've done, all that we have is for our own merit. In the story, none of the servants could have produced anything without that initial investment from the master. Are we afraid that God will ask us to do more than we can, expecting us to work and work and work, and then being not pleased with what's been produced? The danger there is that we'll end up burying the investment in us and feeling resentful. But Jesus points out in this story that we're invested in generously, despite each one of us having different abilities. But in giving us those opportunities, he does have high expectations. One day he'll return and look at what we've done and be delighted and what we've managed to do with our abilities that we've been given, how we've developed those for his kingdom. Every aspect of our lives is given to us for the purpose of investment. All of what we say and are should be seen as active work for the kingdom. We're not free to use them for our own purposes or neglect them altogether. How many times do we act like the third servant with what the Lord has given us, acting lazily, being indifferent, or failing to put them to use as we're called to do for our Lord Jesus Christ for the furtherance of the kingdom? Instead, we must invest what we have in the priorities and plans of Jesus. We need to live and take action and be like the servants, giving account when our master returns. Ron mentioned it this morning and last week, and the Reverend Karen often stands here and says, help. And even last week, there were several requests, although Ron said some were met, there were many, many more this morning. And maybe some this morning are sitting here thinking, mm, my ability is so little, there's nothing I can really do with it. It's not really worth trying. It's not really worth saying anything. We need to take a risk with what we've been given. We need to look forward. Each one of us does have different abilities. It's not what we have, but it's how we use it, as we heard in the scripture today. God will not demand abilities we do not have. But we are all different, and we can be equal in the effort based on what we've been given. We need to lay all our talents, great or small, at the service of God. 
As I mentioned right at the beginning, we're just completing the first month of the year, and there's a certainly a question we need to ask ourselves about what our priorities will be for this year before the year runs out. How will we follow the example of Jesus? There's said something to be said for starting afresh, to be putting ourselves forward to support the mission here at the Lawson. But in doing this, we need to be committed to the mission journey we're on. Yes, we may well stumble. Yes, we may well cast longing glances behind us to things we thought were okay. But as we've heard in the last few weeks, if we call upon our Lord Jesus Christ, he will always catch us if we stumble, helping us back on our feet and turning our faces back in the true direction, renewing a right spirit within us to take up the abilities that we have been given and use them to show God's love for the world. I quote from the Presbytery mission plan that was prepared for Angus. In practical terms, there is now a realization that mission is not an occasional activity of the church, not a box that can be ticked within two weeks of summer mission and then put away till next year. We appreciate better now that mission must underpin all that the church is and does. Understood in this way, mission is not so much about gathering new people in that our congregations might be sustained, but more about the coming of the kingdom. We might go on to say that the strength of a congregation is measured not so much but by how many people come into it, but by how many people go out from it. As we sang right at the beginning of our service today, rejoice Rejoice, Christ is in you, the hope of glory in our hearts. He lives, he lives, his breath is in you. Arise, a mighty army, we arise. The mission plan for the four for grouping calls for a whole army of elders and members to serve the whole area. We need to reflect on this and that call to us. As Paul writes in his first letter to the Corinthians, there are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability to all for their particular service. There can be no holding back. We need to support God's mission. This is the call to us, to be able to use the abilities given to each one of us, to build that relationship with the Lord, effect real change, and advance the kingdom. What abilities do each one of us have that we can nurture today to help advance God's kingdom here? Will we hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant? Let us pray. Lord, this year move us to want to serve you. This year move us to want to serve you in serving others. This year move us to progress our relationship with you. Make this year different because you have made us different. Help us to give this year and our lives to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We now take up this moment to offer our gifts. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty loving God, for all the gifts, benefits and abilities you have given to us, for the things that we all share, we give you thanks. And in this we dedicate ourselves to you, not only through this monetary gift given to you here now and in other ways, but in the giving of our true selves for your service. Help us to use our abilities to the full, to the full in your service of our neighbours and our community 
to your glory. And we ask that you use what we give for the furtherance of your kingdom, that all may come to know your glorious name and what it means to have an active relationship with you. We pray this in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you've had any inclination or feel of a call for any of your gifts and abilities, however small, please do contact Rona, as, as Ron mentioned earlier. But also to those online, if you're thinking sitting there that maybe a little bit of time you might be able to help, then please also contact the church office. Thank you. And before we finish our service today, just a reminder, there is the informal communion afterwards for those who wish to stay. And I didn't get one of the little... Doofers, thank you very much, Rona. Just to do what Karen normally does in as much that if ever you're staying, please ensure that you do have one of these. And then the first little, little plastic film will expose the wafer that we're using, and then after that, the metal foil to expose the juice. So make sure if you do stay for communion, please have one of those. Thank you. I know that we're not just really Christmas, we're still in Epiphany coming through, and this next hymn speaks of Easter's victory. But in that victory, we have to proclaim the gospel message and do God's mission in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us stand to sing to the tune, Ode to Joy, Go in Grace and Make Disciples. Look back and remember that God was with you in all you have done. Stand still and realize Christ is with you in all that you do. Walk forward and trust the Holy Spirit will be with you always and make you eager, so not to hold back, but to obey the will of God and use your abilities gainfully for his glory. And may God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit Bless each one of us. Amen. Welcome. 
when Jesus came around the table with his disciples for the last time before he was crucified, he said to them, I'm so glad to be with you today. I was looking forward to seeing you. You see, they were his friends. They were his family and probably no one on earth that he wanted to be more with. And we come around here today. And as we come today, we accept his invitation to remember, to partake. We believe that he is here with us, for we are his family too. And as he shared with his disciples then, so he still shares with us today. So let us thank him for that invitation as we approach before him in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come and gather here today as part of your family, to share in the celebration of your love, a love that is so great that we struggle to understand, a love so strong that you stood in our place, offering yourself as a sacrifice, paying the penalty that we should pay, so that we can stand here spotless before you. We're grateful to be here, to be counted as your sons and daughters. Help us to be ready and willing to tell of how you died and rose again, so that we can live our lives close to God. So, Lord, we come to your table to share in a celebration of your love. Grateful to be counted as your sons and daughters and ready and willing to tell of how you died and rose again so that we can live our lives close to you. We ask you to join us today taking your rightful place at the head of this table and the head of this church. Father, please send your Holy Spirit to move in power upon these elements and among our people that we may know the presence of the Most High God. Lord, we ask you to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we come and offer ourselves, help us to put aside all differences, all of our trials and tribulations, that as we focus on you, everything else will fade away. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our worship is the offering of the whole of our lives, our relationship to God with our Lord Jesus Christ, cannot be confined to one compartment of our lives. However, this coming together, this time, is important if we're to offer the service of our lives. May this special time sustain us and deepen the constant relationship that we have. And may we be nourished and strengthened for service. In coming to communion, we have heard God's word his call to each and every one of us. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way also, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. And as the invitation was to his disciples at that time, so it is to us also today. So take, eat. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this remembering him. This is the cup of the new covenant sealed by Christ's blood. Drink from it all of you in the memory of him.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, a gift of love that has given us hope, peace, and forgiveness. Send your Holy Spirit to be with us at all times, that we may stand strong and firm as your family, that we may stand strong and firm as your church, and that we may serve you better and love you more. And as we leave this place, may we know your peace in our hearts and your hope in our lives. We ask this in our Saviour Jesus' name. Amen. Please take this moment to turn to those around you and wish them a sign of peace. May peace be with you, Graham. Let us go in the peace of Christ. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.